Okay, so we're going to look at another example involving uh, area with polar curves. Um, this one's a little bit different from the last one. And let me sketch things out and then you'll maybe see why. All right, so if we draw things, and uh, we'll have to also sort of disambiguate a bit here when we talk about the area between them. What do we actually mean? So the first curve, r equals 1, unit circle, right? Second curve is a four-leaf rose, and we start two units out because of the two in front of the two cos two theta there. All right, so we're going to go around, through, down this way, there, up, down, and back. All right. Okay. So here's the, here's the trouble. What do we mean by between the curves? Um, or, and, and really, I guess between is not the right word here. Really, we should say maybe bounded by. Um, and of course, the, the textbook actually illustrates what area are they interested in here. Um, because there's, there's a lot of possibilities looking at the drawing. The area we're interested in is this one. Here, here, here. Okay, that's the area that we're trying to find. And yes, there are certainly other regions of interest here that we could look at, but that's the one that we're going to focus on. So the thing that makes this a little bit different from the last one is we, we are actually starting at the origin. And you'll notice while well, we go out and we go out and we seems like we're just hitting the unit circle each time. But there's going to be a point here where we hit that intersection, right? We meet that intersection. And we don't actually have the whole area yet. There's a little area left over. This bit in here. All right, let's try and shade that in. So we got that little bit of area there that we need to calculate. All right, so it's not quite an area between curves this time. It's maybe area bounded by curves. And so you can probably guess that the the first thing that we need to be moving on this is that point of intersection, right? So let's see. What is the intersection? Well, when those two curves are equal, that's where the intersection is going to take place. Sorry, not sine, cosine. Get that erased. By the way, if you're wondering, this is a, um, it's a reshoot uh, because the Batteries ran out of my microphone the first time we did this video. Um, since the first time we did this video, we've been through uh, about 16 months of COVID pandemic. So if you're wondering why my hair is a little bit longer than it was in the video right before it, that's why. Okay, cos 2 theta should be equal to 1 half. That means 2 theta should be pi over 3. That means theta should be pi over 6. Okay, so that's at pi over 6, and the other thing we need here is where does this curve end, right? Because then we're going to do these bits here of that curve. Um, we're not going all the way to pi over 2. No, we want to go to pi over 4, right? If I plug pi over 4 into here, 2 times pi over 4 gives me pi over 2. That's the 0 for my cosine function. So that's when we come back to the origin. Very good. So the area that we're interested in then looks like this. It's going to be the integral from 0 to the intersection point, pi over 6. 1 half, so the first function of theta is just the constant function 1 squared. Not that squaring does anything, times d theta. And then we go from pi over 6 to pi over 4, 1 half of, so 2 cos 2 theta, and we're going to square that whole thing. All right, now, that's easy. It's just 1 half times the length of the interval, so half of pi over 6. That's pi over 12. 
The other one, we need a bit more work. Okay, so let's have a look. We have um, one half of two cos two theta all squared. Okay, so the two gets squared, gives me four. Four times a half leaves me with a two. So it's two cos squared two theta. And if we apply a power reduction formula, that is going to be one plus cos four theta. So when we integrate, we're gonna get the integral from pi over six to pi over four of one plus cos four theta, d theta, and that's going to give me theta plus one over four sine four theta from pi over four to pi over six. So that is pi over six minus, oh, sorry. <laughs> Got those mixed up, didn't I? That should be our four, that should be our six, pi over four minus pi over six, for the first part, and then one over four, sine of, let's see, so four times pi over four is pi, sine of pi is zero. Uh, four times pi over six, that's two pi over three, it's in the second quadrant, Sine of two pi over three is root three over two. So this is gonna be, that's three pi over 12 minus two pi over 12. So that's um, pi over 12 plus, and multiply by the one quarter, root three over eight. Okay, so the, the whole thing here, we get pi over 12 plus pi over 12 plus root three over eight, and I guess we can maybe, might as well do the one step, simplify pi over six plus root three over eight. Okay, there we go. Um, by the way, I guess we can, uh, we can conclude that I, I did a bad job of drawing this picture because as I drew it, the second area appears to be much smaller than the first, but um, calculating things, the second area is actually bigger. Um, so I guess I have to work on my artistic skills. Oops, we got a quick correction to make on this one. Um, my drawing wasn't that bad. That area is smaller. I just messed up my fundamental theorem of calculus. <laughs> Coming back to here, right, so this is pi over four minus pi over six, as I said. And then one quarter of, well, zero for the sine of pi. But of course, this should be minus, minus sine of two pi over three. So minus root three over two. Better. So that's still pi over 12. So this is pi over 12 minus root three over, well, eight, once I multiply the four in. and. So now that is pi over six minus root three over eight. That's better. Okay. <laughs>